All right, so for th the third video of solving the systems of equations, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at how do we do this algebraically. What does this look like when we don't want to graph these? And quite honestly, this is the way you're going to almost always do this because it's exact, it's efficient, it's faster, it's just, it makes so much more sense and um, most of the time we don't have Desmos open to help us with that. And even with Desmos, um, this is still, I think, in some ways almost faster than opening up the app and everything. So the thing to remember basically about these, the hardest thing that you're going to have to do with this, that most of that, if you struggle with anything, will be this, is just setting these up. All right, and the thing is setting it up is a lot like how you set up the other equations. And if you remember, um, we, we taught you a few different methods. We taught you like a substitution method, and then we taught you elimination, right? So what we're going to be using for this is you're going to have to pretty much always go with substitution for these. Um, and I think that works out the best with these. You can't really do elimination. Well, you, you actually probably could do elimination with this, but substitution is the most effective, the most efficient, and makes the most sense. So let's take a look at this, all right? So, so let's find the solution to the system of equations. So we've got our quadratic right here, and then we've got our linear equation right here. So pretty much what I'm gonna tell you to do every time is always start with your linear equation. Always start with this one, and then always solve for y. All right, and the reason you wanna solve for y is because we're gonna take whatever y equals and then we're gonna put it over here and set it equal to this other side. It's the easiest to, to substitute for y. So let's take 2y minus 16 equals 6x. We're gonna solve for y. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide this whole thing by two. Divide that side. Sorry, I did that wrong. We're gonna divide this side by two and we're gonna divide that side by two. All right, and when I do that, I get y minus 8 equals 3x, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 8 to both sides. All right, so I add 8, and then you would get y is equal to 3x plus 8. So now I have my, um, I have my equation that I am going to take, and I'm going to move and set it in here. So your equation is going to look like this. It's going to be 3x plus 8 is what we're going to substitute for y right here. And then we're going to set it equal to x squared minus 5x minus 12. And then pretty much this is just a matter of moving things around, set it equal to 0, and solve for it. And I think as we go, as I go through this, you're going to be like, oh, this really isn't that bad. Um, and then we know all these different ways now of solving these things for zero. We know how to complete the square. We know how to factor. We know how to use the quadratic equation. So, or quadratic formula, my bad. So the thing is, we, we have the tools we need to solve any of these problems. All right, there's, there's nothing in here you do not know how to do. All right, you have been equipped. So what we're gonna start by doing is we're gonna, we're gonna basically clear this side out so that it's equal to zero. That's what we want it to be equal, right? So in order to do that, we're going to move our 3x over. So I'm going to put that under the things that applied to. And then I'm going to move that 8 over. And I'm going to do it like this. And then that's going to take all this and get rid of that and give you the equation. 0 is equal to x squared minus 8x minus 20. All right. And then we're going to, oops, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on there. We're going to take this and we're going to finish it up here. So if I have 0 equals x squared minus 8x minus 20, um, I'm looking at this and I think I can factor this. So let's try factoring. So if I go 0, I'm going to have x here and I'm going to have x here. It looks like I'm going to have, this is negative right here, so I'm going to have a negative and a plus, right? And then the two factors of 20, or the factor of two factors of 20 that I can use that 
with the positive and the negative that will get me negative 8 are negative 10 and 2. Right? So because 10 times 2 gives me 20, negative 10x plus 2x gives me negative 8x, and that's what we want. So we have our two solutions then. We have x plus 2 is either equal to 0 or x minus 10 is equal to 0. And so if you solve for x, subtract 2, you get x is equal to negative 2. And then for this one, you add 10 to both sides. Sorry, I a little close to the edge there. You get x is equal to 10. Now, we aren't done because this is a system of equations and we are looking for two points, right? Well, in this case, we're looking for two points for this one. All right, so if I'm looking for two points, I've got two x coordinates and each of those needs a y coordinate. And so the hardest part about doing these for me is just to remember that, oh yeah, I gotta take this and I gotta plug it into one of these equations and I always plug it into this one because it's a lot easier to put it into a linear equation than a quadratic. So let's do that. So we have 2y minus 16 is equal to 6 times negative 2. We're doing this one right here. All right, so 2y minus 16 equals negative 12. Add 16 to both sides. You get 4, 2y, and you get y equals 2. So my first solution I have, and I'm going to write these in green over here on the left side. My first solution is the point negative 2, 2. All right, so there's 1. And now let's do the same thing with the other one. So let's take this 10 and pop it in that equation. So you have 2y minus 16 equals 6 times 10. You get 60 over here, 2y minus 16. If you add 16 to both sides, and we're gonna run out of room, I apologize, you get 76 is equal to 2y. And if you divide by two, and I'm not gonna show the dividing by two step, you get y is equal to, I believe, 38. All right, and so your next, your next solution is we put in the point 10, right? This one right here. You get the point 10, 38. And if you put this in Desmos, you will see that this is indeed the case. So these really aren't super complicated. They're, they're long. They, they take a little more time than what you're used to putting in for a problem, maybe a little more time than a quadratic formula problem. But they, they aren't complicated. You solve for y with your linear equation. And the reason you do it with your linear equation is because it's easy. All right. And then you set that whatever y is equal to, you set that equal to whatever the y is equal to in the other one. In that case, you've gotten rid of your y variable, and then you're just down to x's, and then it's just move things around, solve your quadratic, and get your solutions. And then once you have your solutions, plug it back into that linear equation, find your y points that go with those x solutions you found, and you're good to go. So good luck with these and, uh, you know, just have the confidence that you know how to do these because you do have the tools you need.